I'm Rochelle Fabian Morgan, and I'm an Arts Westchester teaching artist. In today's video, we are going to make butterflies like this, and this, and even this. And all you need are paper plates, a pencil or a pen, scissors, a sponge, and paints if you have them, tempera or poster paint, um, acrylics, watercolors, whatever you have. But if you don't have paints, I'll show you how to make watercolors, you might know this trick, out of markers. Even if they're dried up, you could use these. All you need is a little cup and just maybe mm, that much water, okay? So are you ready? Let's start. With the paper plate, we're going to make a reusable stencil. Fold the paper plate in half. Along the folded edge, draw half a butterfly and try to keep it inside the inner circle of the plate. Keep the plate folded and cut out the butterfly shape. Try to carefully cut along the lines of your drawing. You want to do this because you want the cutout of the butterfly as well as the outer frame. Now I made my drawing of the butterfly just a little bit fancy with some extra ridges along the bottom part. If you know anything about butterflies, this is more of a swallowtail type of butterfly. You can make yours more of a monarch and the bottom part is more smooth. And so now when we unfold it, this is the cutout and this is the frame. So now we're going to paint without brushes. Let's get out that sponge. Hopefully it's a clean sponge. With sharp scissors, cut it into pieces about an inch wide. It helps if the sponge is a little bit damp. Then take each piece and pull it apart to make little tears, but you don't want to completely pull it apart. What you're doing is adding more texture to each piece. Now let's try painting with these sponges using the cutout stencil. Instead of paper, I'm going to use another paper plate. Because I'm using paints, I really like using paper plates. They absorb better than regular paper and won't get that wavy kind of texture afterwards. Using the sponges, I'm going to blot or dab color all over the paper plate. I'm going to do it one color at a time and use one piece of sponge per color. I'm also going to wait a couple of minutes in between colors to let them dry. I don't want the colors to blend. I want to actually see them sort of mixed in together, but still hold their color. I'm going to stop at two colors, but feel free to do as many as you'd like. I'm going to take the cutout of the butterfly and place it in the center of my paper plate. I'm going to hold it down with one hand and paint around the outside of the butterfly. I dab along the edges first to make sure that you could really see the outline of the butterfly. I switch sponges and add a different color. In the end, I only use two colors, but you could use as many as you'd like. It's time to remove the cutout and see the results. Not bad, but let's now try using the frame. And we'll start the same way, using a paper plate and applying color one at a time with a sponge. I place the frame right on top of my paper plate and because they're the same size and shape, they nestle quite nicely into each other. Using a sponge, I add color to the inside of the frame. Once again, I add each color one at a time and using different sponges. And now it's time to remove the frame. Voila, my butterfly. Okay, so you don't have paint. No problem. Get out those markers. 
So for every color that you're going to use, you need one cup. Try to use a clear cup, whether it's glass or plastic, and you're going to add maybe a half inch of water. Place one marker in each cup. For the best results, wait overnight. But if you can't wait, two hours should be long enough to get a dark enough watercolor. Because working with watercolors can be a little messy, I place a brown paper bag underneath my paper plate. Then I place the cutout butterfly in the center of the plate. Again, you would use the sponges to apply the color. You don't want to oversaturate your sponge, so squeeze the excess back into the cup. And then you could use the brown paper to test out the color before applying it to the paper plate. Let's take out the cutout butterfly. Hmm. Let's try using the frame. Once more, we would use one sponge for each color. Squeeze out the excess color, test it out on the brown paper, and then start applying the color inside the frame. It's time to remove the frame. The results are a little different, but I could have gone a little bit darker with my colors. Now let's play around with the cutouts. We already have a small butterfly cutout, but let's make a larger one. We'll need another paper plate. Fold it in half, and then draw half of a butterfly along the folded edge. This time, draw past the inner circle of the paper plate and make it as big as possible. Keep the plate folded and cut out the butterfly shape. Once I cut it out, I'm actually going to save the frame for another project, so I'm going to set that aside. But now I've got this large butterfly. Hmm. I'm going to use the rest of my watercolors for my markers. So I place my butterflies on top of a brown paper bag and then use the sponges with the marker watercolors to cover the surface of my butterflies. I actually cover both sides of the butterflies. And because I have some acrylic paint on hand, I take my sponge and I just do blots or dabs just on one side of the butterfly. Then I would close the butterfly in half, press down with a scrap piece of paper, and voila! I have a symmetrical and beautiful butterfly. Let's take a look at that again with the small butterflies. Using one sponge per color, I add dabs to only one side of the butterfly. I fold the butterfly in half, place a piece of scrap paper on top, and press down. And when I open it up, voila! Another symmetrical butterfly. Okay, let's try that one more time. I'm beginning to like these butterflies. How about you? So you might be asking yourself, what are you gonna do with something like this? It's a paper plate, but look how pretty it is. You could hang it on your wall. You could even cut it out and make it into some sort of card. It's double-sided. Um, but the ones that are cut out, you could actually hang them up on a string and put them in your window. Or they're so pretty, you could actually wear it. Look at that on your hair with a hairpin, just a little tape on the back, or attach it to a safety pin. That might be a little too big, you could go a little smaller. Okay, now when you're putting these on the window, you could actually just put a little piece of tape on the back and just put it on the glass, and that would look really pretty. Or you could put a bunch of them on strings, and you can make some sort of sun catcher. I don't know, so many different options. Okay, I hope you had fun and are inspired to make butterflies, and I will see you next time.
If you liked this virtual art workshop, please visit artsw.org.